Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope that you all are enthusiastic and eager to learn something new. On that note, let me inform you that the global gender gap report has been released and I am going to cover that in this video. Apart from that, I am also going to cover many more things in this video. So let's just begin. But before that, let me inform you guys that we have already launched the RBI Sabin Abad live courses and you already know that your NABAD examination is just around the corner. You can expect the examination of phase one to happen around the end of August or the beginning of September. That is the tentative date. So roughly you have approximately one uh, and one and a half months left for your preparation. So don't take a chance. Prepare sincerely. Give your 100% to this attempt and then assess uh, how was your performance and whatever is going to happen just leave it on the future but you have to give your 100 percent attempt okay uh, so in order to help you we have this mobile application as well here you can see many more features and also if you are an enrolled student you would know that live classes are there easily available on the mobile app so it makes it all the more convenient for all of you to join our course so guys, before moving into the questions, let me inform you that if you have any queries related to your preparation or anything, since your Nabad is just around the corner, if you need any kind of help, you can call us, you can mail us, you can scroll our website to know more about us or our offering and you can also post your queries on the discussions.anunjandal.in. One more channel that we have is Telegram channel where you can connect with us also and many more other students who are preparing for the same examination. Oh yes, I remember that on the Telegram channel, I have already provided you the PDF. So download the PDF, keep it beside you and then try to learn what I'm teaching. So let's begin with the first question. So here the question is which two states have signed an agreement for collaboration on training, technology, capacity building and extension activities for saffron and other temperate crops. So here guys, the right answer is option D. Jammu Kashmir and Sikkim. So this UT and state have signed this agreement to basically share the knowledge uh, and best practices in the cultivation of saffron and other, other kind of temperate crops. That is the basic idea of this collaboration. One more important thing here is that this collaboration has taken place under the Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat scheme. Now I hope that all of you must have covered this scheme thoroughly and if you hadn't then guys this is the chance cover the scheme because this can be asked in the examination okay moving ahead which state celebrates the karachi festival or basically karachi festival it would be the right pronunciation so here tripura is the right answer so guys it is not a harvest festival or an agricultural festival no it is just a basic hindu religious festival it's just that it was in the news and your examination is just one to two months away, not exactly two months, approximately one month away. So yes, you can expect such a question in your examination. So Tripura is the right answer. Next question is, um, which university has signed an MOU with agricultural and processed food products development and authority to conduct various training programs on pre-harvest and post-harvest management? So here the right answer is Assam Agricultural University. So the basic idea behind this collaboration is to train the stakeholders so that the food wastage can be reduced and uh, optimum utilization of resources can be attained. So that is the basic idea behind this collaboration wherein the training related to the pre-harvest, before harvesting and after harvesting would be given. Okay, so that is the basic idea. Uh, with which country has telecommunications consultants India Limited signed an MOU for participation in the Pan-African e-network project named e-Vidya Bharti or e-Arogya Bharti? So here guys, Madagascar is the right answer. Now basically, what this news all about and what this project is. So first of all, let me tell you what is the project. So e-Vidya Bharti is the pro uh, project through which uh, we provide the educational consultancy to the people residing in other country in an online manner, okay? And e-Arogya Bharti is the scheme under which we provide teleconsultation to the people residing in another country in the field of medicine, okay? Medical experts 
provide the consultancy to the people residing in different country and both of these projects guys i hope that you already know this fact but if you hadn't known so this might amaze you that india has been operating this pro these two projects in many african countries now so this is indicative of the soft power of india as well as the uh, you can say the helping hand nature of india we are helping the other nations okay so that is uh, in that sense these two projects become important can you tell me that which ministry is responsible for the implementation of both these programs this is your question to tell me moving ahead with which university uh, sorry which university has signed an mou with the national institute of animal biotechnology for collaboration in fundamental areas of bio biological sciences so here university of hyderabad guys is the right answer and again nothing much is there for you to cram your mind into because it is just a simple collaboration between university of hyderabad and the uh, national institute of animal biotechnology for collaboration now my question from all of you is you have to tell me the location of this institution okay moving ahead uh what is india's score in the global gender gap index 2022 so here guys option a 0.629 is india's score in this index and let me tell you that india has scored as well as ranked very poorly in this index because this index has 146 countries and out of these 146 india stands at 135 now we are the world's most populous at the moment second most populous but probably by next year we are going to be the world's most populous country still when it comes to the gender disparity we are ranking very very poor it is 135 out of 16 the score is 0.629 now remember that this index is released by the world economic forum because generally the organizations releasing the reports are also asked so do remember it's world economic forum now the country which has topped so iceland is number 1 finland norway new zealand sweden follow the suit they are second third fourth and fifth then we have afghanistan at the bottom okay so guys these are the four economic param uh, sorry four parameters of this index on which the countries were assessed and and mind you guys that all these parameters are important because directly the parameters are also asked in your phase 1 as well as phase 2 esi so from both the phases perspective you need to remember the parameters and you have esi in your phase 1 as well of nabard so nabard students do prepare or remember these four uh, parameters because they can be asked okay now let's talk something about the average score okay so the global average score of this index so the global score average score of the gender disparity or gender gap in the world is 0.681 okay and india score is 0.629 then we have the score of economic participation and opportunity sub index 0.603 Score of educational attainment zero point nine four four, health and survival sub index zero point nine five eight, political empowerment sub index zero point two two zero. So these are the four uh, sub indices and their global average scores. And guys, global averages of all these sub indices as well as the overall index are important. So do remember the scores. now let's also talk about the rankings on the basis of parameters or the sub indices okay so as far as the economic participation and opportunity sub index is concerned so lao pdr is guys number 1 then india's rank is 143 then educational attainment argentina argentina is first and 107 is india's rank health and survival belize is number 1 india is 146 political empowerment iceland is first india stands at 48 now guys here a very grotesque picture is there in front of you as far as the health and survival is concerned we are the bottom we are the last okay so we are even the last 
of from in the list of the countries that include uh, that include Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan, or many more countries which are very less in development in comparison to India. Plus, we are the world's most populous country by next year. And what are we going to do? What are we doing in terms of health and survival? We are standing at the bottom if we compare the health, uh, the gender gap, if we consider the gender gap. So here, strictly, India needs to work. The policymakers need to work to enhance the health coverage to include more and more women into the ambit of formal health care system. Then, as far as the economic participation and opportunity is concerned, then again we are in the last bottom in the bottom five countries. We stand we stand at one forty third position, which is again not a very good position for India to stand at for the fastest growing developing economy to stand at. As far as the economic participation and opportunities are concerned and remember we are talking about the gender gap so here this reflects the uh, lack of opportunities or the discouragement that women face in india when it comes to economic opportunity when it comes to health and survival educational attainment or any other parameter which is given here okay so as far as educational attainment is concerned 107 which is again not a very good ranking only one parameter is there when where we have achieved a significant improvement that is political empowerment 48th so India strictly needs to work on all these parameters. And if you get any essay in your NABAD examination uh, or your next year examination of ESI, you, uh, if there is a question on the women empowerment, you can directly cite this report and also suggest measures to improve the present situation, okay? Now we have compared India in the world map now let's compare india with the south asian countries okay so again india here performs really poor sixth position out of the nine countries and the countries which are lagging behind us are iran pakistan and afghanistan the countries which are notoriously famous for their gender discrimination and above apart from this all the countries which are uh, less we can say less uh, in comparison to the economic power that we hold Okay, Bangladesh economy is not as powerful as India's economy, neither Nepal, Sri Lanka, we are seeing what is the situation there, Maldives and Bhutan. So none of their economy is as strong as ours economy. But still, if we consider the gender gap, then we stand at the sixth position, which is a very uh, poor position to stand. Okay. So that was the global gender gap report. I hope that you have understood the report. Don't go into too much of its depth. But again, for ESI's descriptive point of view, I taught you the report. Okay. So now let's move on to the next question. What is the name of the mutual fund distributor recruitment campaign launched by Association of Mutual Funds in India? So here, guys, the right answer is Kare Shuru. All such campaigns are important for you to remember okay now what is the purpose of this campaign this is basically to recruit more and more people as the mutual fund distributor that is the basic idea can anyone of you tell me what who is the present head of association of mutual fund industry so this is your uh, next question now i have already told you the purpose of this campaign one more important fact was given in the news article that is the expected size of the mutual fund industry in India. So by 2030 or before even 2030, Indian mutual fund industry is going to have 100 uh, trillion rupees worth of assets under management. So that is a very big size. And in order to basically aware the people, aware the job seekers about the opportunities that this sector holds, this campaign has been organized. Which insurance company has partnered with, uh, sorry, which insurance company has partnered to provide insurance cover to rural population? So this partnership has taken place with common service centers. So here the right answer is Star Health and Allied Insurance Company Limited. The basic purpose of this partnership is to provide the insurance products to the rural population. That is all to this news. Next question is, which has become the 20th member of the Eurozone? to uh, adopt euro as the single currency so it is croatia now guys your 
task is to find out the capital and currency of Croatia and mention it in the comment section below. <laughs> Who is the present CMD of New India Assurance Company Limited? So it is Madhulika Bhaskar. She has been given the charge of this insurance company uh, for a period of three months. However, the period is short. So you can say that she is the interim CMD of this organization. But since your examination could be in just one month, so this question can be asked, therefore it is here. So do remember Madhulika Bhaskar is the new CMD of New India Assurance Company Limited until any news comes out. Okay. So guys here this video ends. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you have anything to ask from me or to suggest me, you can mention it in the comment section below or you can approach me through the channels that I mentioned in the beginning. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope that you are preparing with your 100% sincerity. And on that note, I would like to say goodbye to all of you. All the best. Prepare hard.